Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, we will be talking about AWX workflows. Uh, workflows are kind of a neat way to kind of like streamline, you know, say you have multiple different uh, AWX templates for Ansible playbooks, and you're trying to figure out, oh, well, you know, I run this template and then I run this next and then I run this next. And it's usually, you know, a pattern um, and you kind of just, you know, just go through it. Workflows kind of help you, you know, streamline that process and put them all together so that you only have to one, run one workflow and it will run all the templates in the way that you want it based off of failure, success, and what you need to do. So this video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy my content or want to sponsor me or send me some free swag or hardware, let me know. My email is in the description below. So let's get started, guys. All right, so we logged into our AWX service. So in here, we can go to templates and we can click add a workflow template. Um, by doing so, we'll essentially just, you know, set the name um, workflow one. In this case, uh, we'll select the organization's default. Um, we'll use our inventory for our home lab um, and everything else you can leave blank. We'll set the variables. Um, because we essentially verbalize all of our templates to specify what host name we want to use. So we would select that on prompt on launch. Other than that, you can kind of leave everything else as default if you want to. You can change it up if you want it, but this is kind of what you need here. Um, then we'll hit save. So then it will bring you to the visualizer page. This page essentially kind of visualizes how your workflow should work. So we will start by setting, saying, hey, we want to set up use our setup new server template. So we'll hit that, hit next. Now, the thing here is in our setup new server template, it essentially prompts us for the host. But because the workflow, we'll, we'll specify the host name in the workflow, we don't have to specify the host name here. Um, it will essentially, essentially bring down the variable throughout each playbook. So what we'll do is just hit next, so we won't actually even specify it. So you'll see it's null, but it will actually just take the, the variable that we passed in at the very top of the workflow. So then we hit next here. So now you can see we have essentially it'll start when we kick this off, it'll start setting up the new server. Now there are a few things that we can do here. So um, that's just info. Um, but what we can do is add a next node. So like when this job finishes, whether it's on a success, on a failure, or always, it will kick off the next thing. So like in this case, we wanted just to set it up so that it would just run, we, we would play on a success, fail when, uh, stop when there isn't a success, right? So that it doesn't continue doing it all. But say for example, you wanted to like send a notification, a specific notification outside of like, you know, the AWS notifications and you have like a notification template. So like on a failure, you could run the notification thing um, as opposed to just stopping, right? Um, or like say for example, you got, you deployed out a lot of files and you need, you know, files cleaned up. Um, no matter whether it's failed or not, you can always hit use always so that it would always run like the file cleanup or whatever you need to clean up at the very end, regardless of if the previous playbook succeeded or failed, right? So, but in this case, we're just going to do on success. <clears throat> so on success, if the setup new server is good, we'll do patching. We'll, we'll make sure it's patched, even though we patch in our setup new server. This is more for example's sake, right? So same thing, we can leave host name blank and we hit save. So now essentially it'll run the setup new server. And then if this succeeds, it'll run patching. Um, so we'll hit save here, up here, and then we can launch this. So with this, we will launch and we will hit next cloud. Um, so essentially it will take this variable into all of the playbooks. So you can see now that this essentially spawns a job. So this workflow will spawn a job and it'll spawn this setup new server job. And we can see this output. Um, so if you actually go to jobs, you can see that this workflow kicks off um, the setup new server, so that, that just finished. And now that that's successfully finished, it kicked off the patching. So you don't have to like wait for this to finish and then kick off the next one. The workflow will just automatically do it for you. So you can actually see in here how long each job took too. So you got 11 seconds here and nine seconds there. So you can easily kind of see, hey, how long does each template take? Um, and you don't have to be babysitting, you know, your steps to get from one, you know, the beginning of your maintenance to the end of your maintenance. It just kind of goes through. Um, the only problem is you got to make sure that if it fails somewhere that you, you know, are watching so that essentially um, you don't stop, you know, halfway through that maintenance and then the other half doesn't finish. So. 
but you can utilize workflows in this way to kind of help streamline your process. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.